Hello fellow making enthusiasts. Today I'm going to be engraving on a big mug. Now this is a mug that I got at Walmart. I cannot remember if it was $1.98 or $2.98, but it was $3 or less. It was under $3 and it's huge. It's about eight inches tall and it's really wide. If you don't want one this large, they do sell mugs at the Dollar Tree for a dollar and it is, you can see it's smaller, it is more manageable, it might be more practical for a lot of people. It's about six inches tall and it's definitely less expensive. But I'm making this for my niece's 40th birthday party. So I wanted it to be kind of a funny statement piece. So what we'll need today to engrave this mug is first of all the mug. We'll need some engraving etch, and I have Armor Etch. You can buy this at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, off Amazon. When I use Armor Etch, I typically use gloves. I put it onto my surface with a little popsicle stick. Before I put it on my glass, I clean my glass with alcohol and paper towels. To make my stencil, I'll use my computer with Design Space. I'll use my Cricut Maker. I will use some Oracal vinyl that I purchased off of Amazon. And this is actually, it's, it's Oracal brand, but it's O-R-A-F-O-L. And it is inexpensive. It's 10 yards, and I just looked at the price. It's under $17 right now. Sometimes it's a little bit more than that. But it lasts forever. To transfer my image to my glass, I just use this contact brand contact paper that you can buy at Walmart. I do make sure that it is the transparent. I made the mistake of buying white one time and you couldn't really see through it to see where you were putting it on things. So I don't use that anymore. And then I have a rotary cutter, some scissors, and a weeding tool. So I think I have everything. So let's get started. Okay, I'm in Cricut Design Space and I've designed what I want to put on this big mug. And so let me show you what I've used for the word Rachel. I've used the font Engravers MT. For the 40, I have also used the Engravers MT. For the TH, I wanted that to little, look a little differently. So I used Adobe Gothic Standard. And then for the 2019, I've also used the Engravers MT. I like the engraver's font or something chunky for glass etching show th so that it shows up better. If you use really thin fonts, it's just really hard to see the etching. Okay, to have a weeding box, I need to have, instead of just a gray box, because if I made this, you'll see it would be on a separate map, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another shape, just another square. And I'm going to have this square be just slightly larger than the other square. I'm going to send that to the back. Okay. Send to back. There we go. Now I have that dark black or gray showing in the bottom. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull the boxes off of there. That'll be faster. And then I'm going to select both and say slice. That's going to make it where I can get rid of that center. And then I have my weeding box left. There's probably a simpler way. And if someone knows what that is, let me know. I'd love to hear. Okay, now I think I need to go back and hit attach again. Now when I send it to the maker, it should all be lined up like you see it on the screen. And you can see that it is. So the next step would be click continue. I'm just using a basic vinyl as my stencil. So I'm just going to click on vinyl. And I'll show you when I turn my camera around, I have my fine point blade in, and we'll be ready to cut. So let me get my camera turned around, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, now the first thing I want to do before I even get started is to clean the front of my mug where my design's going to go. You want to make sure that you don't have this really close to your maker or anything important. Uh, but I'm going to spray a little alcohol on. This is just regular alcohol that I bought at Walmart. I don't remember the percentage. It was, I believe, somewhere around 80%, somewhere between 70 and 90. It was either 70, 80, or 90. I've used multiple strengths and they all work well. You want to do this so that you get any oils from your fingers or anything like that off. Just get it a really clean surface that not only the vinyl will stick to well, but the etching cream will get directly to the glass. So I do that first so that it can be drying. Your surface does need to be really dry before you put your vinyl on and before you start etching it. So let me drag my maker over and we'll continue on cutting out what we designed. Okay, remember that my design with the weeding box was a little bit over three inches. So I'm gonna cut a four inch by four inch section of this vinyl out. And it's going to be approximately four inches by four inches. I don't have my ruler right here. So I'm going to guess at four inches by four inches that looks a little big but that's okay so I'm going to adhere that down to my mat and with vinyl just regular vinyl not heat transfer vinyl you just do it face up you don't mirror your design or anything Now, I was at the point of getting ready to send it to my maker, and you might recall that it told me to make sure I have the fine point blade in. So, I have it underneath those white clip things, not clips, but they just hold it down. I put a little pressure on this end, this back side, and go ahead and send it. Actually, now I'm going to send it. That was just to load my material. Okay, we're done with the computer and the maker, so I'll go ahead and move my computer out of the way. Let me unload my material and then I'll move my maker out of the way. Now I did think of one more thing that I'll use, which is just this little scraper. If And I'll adhere my uh, contact paper down on my design with this. If you don't have one of these, a credit card or an old gift card, anything like that will work. So let me unload my vinyl. I like to get my mats covered up right after I use them so that dust does not accumulate on those. Okay, so now I need to weed my design. Now, because this is a stencil, I'm actually taking out and will not use the numbers and the letters, but I will leave the background. So on a stencil, you just have to remember to weed it pretty much backwards of what you usually do. Okay, so I'm going to just take my waist off. Okay, so this little extra line down here that I really didn't even need, I'm just going to take that off so that I don't count on that extra vinyl to keep etching off my glass and have it accidentally seep through the vinyl. You'll also notice that I poked a little hole right here, so I'll probably cover that up with a little bit of tape so I don't accidentally get some etching on it. And then I'll also tape around my design to protect my glass. So now what I want to do is cut some transfer paper. It just needs to be as large or larger than my design. Again, this is just inexpensive contact brand contact paper that you can purchase at Walmart. Now, once you get a corner started, 
I don't like to pull the entire backing off. I like to lay it down and smooth it out as I go. So then is when this little burnishing or scraping tool, whatever it is, comes in handy. That's probably good. Then I can just peel off my vinyl, do it slowly, and get the vinyl off my finger. Do it slowly so that you can see if something does not come up. I want something white under this so you can see it a little better. Okay. So weed it or pull it back slowly so that if, just like that, that didn't stick, you can burnish it and get it to stick. Sometimes you can just kind of pull it down with your nail and it cut a little bit through the backing, which is why it's having a tough time sticking down. There we go. Okay, so there's a little crease in the center of my zero, so I'll need to fix that before I lay it onto my glass. You can probably see right there. So I'm just going to take my weeding tool and lift under the little bubble that there is and stretch it out, and that fixed it. Okay. So we're ready to position it onto the glass. I'm going to grab something that will hold the glass more upright like that. Give me just a minute. Okay, so... Okay, so looking from the side, that looks to be pretty horizontal. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a piece of tape across there to make sure you get it straight. My design is so large, it's going to be pretty close to the bottom and pretty close to the top. So I think I can eyeball it good enough to get it very nice. I'm going to turn it more to my angle so I can see it. And if you see my head pop in and out, sorry about that. I may delete that part out. Okay, so there we are. Now, I'm going to, again, really burnish this down onto my glass. You don't want any bubbles up under where your uh, vinyl matches, or I'm sorry, where your vinyl meets the glass, because then the armor edge can sneak under there. If you have bubbles over here, that really doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that all your edges are very, very um, clean. So I can see you might be able, I have a bubble right there. So I need to make sure that gets out. And once I take the contact paper off, I can make sure even better that it's, that it's just right. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Take the contact paper off. I do it way back at an angle. I find that to be... Uh, the most successful way to do it. If you pull it up, for some reason, it tends to pull your uh, centers and things up. So that came off very well. Now, in doing glass etching, the trick to having a really good product is all the prep work. And so I have my little hole in my vinyl there. I'm just going to cover over that with some of my contact paper. 
I can see I have a bubble close to the edge there. I don't think it's quite on the edge, but I do want to go ahead and push that out. There we go. I'm going to hold this up to my eyes for a minute just so I can see any other bubbles. I can see just a little one that might be reaching all the way up to the H. There, that's gone. Now the rest of the bubble should have no impact. It looks like I got a little slit in my vinyl right there. So just like I did over that other little hole, I'm just going to put a really small piece of contact paper over that. Whoops. Okay, and when you're working with this, you want to try as much as you can to keep your fingers off the actual glass that's getting itched. Okay, so now, part of that prep work, I just want to make sure that I don't have glass exposed anywhere near where my etching cream is going. So I'm going to lay that down there. And then I'm going to use, let me cut it a little straighter. I'm going to use some for the top. I didn't get that real straight, so I'm going to fill in right here. I'm going to use some of my excess vinyl just to cover over this side. And then lastly, I want to get close to the S and the TH and make sure that it is protected as well. Okay, so now that the prep work's done, the rest is super simple, super easy, super fast. Here's my Armor Etch Cream. Again, you can get it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, a bunch of different places. I'm going to take this off camera and shake it up real quick. Okay, now, once you've used your Armor Etch, it can accumulate some dry pieces at the top. So I like to have it on something when I open it so those don't fall over my table. Or they don't fall onto my table and I have to clean them up later. I don't really like touching this Armor Etch. So, I use gloves. Okay, so I'll get this open. And there went all the pieces. There's one right there that I was talking about. Now, I like to use just a popsicle stick to put it on. You can just scrape down in there. It really doesn't take a ton. I probably put more on it than you really need to, but I want it to etch really well. I don't want there to accidentally be any pockets where there's no armor etch. You do have to be careful that you don't accidentally... Okay, so this hand needs to stay clean. If you accidentally get some on that and then you grab it, you're going to have a problem down here. 
You also want to make sure when you're pulling it over your glass that you don't accidentally drop a blob on a piece of your glass that is not protected. Okay, so I'm going to leave that on there for about five minutes and then I'm going to come back and kind of rub it in some more and then I'll leave it on about five more minutes and then I'll be ready to wash it off. Okay, it's been about five minutes and you can see that the etching cream has moved down a little bit and so that's why this clear, you might not be able to see the clear protection, but the clear protection is very important whether it's clear or it's extra vinyl or it's whatever you're using, some type of tape. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of move this around just in case there's any air pockets in the etching cream where it should be touching the glass. I want to work those out. Now I've seen some people do videos that say they leave it on for an hour, that the longer you leave it on the better it works. I've left it on for as little as four minutes and it worked fine so I don't I don't tend to wait an hour. Okay, so I'm done with my popsicle stick. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the, that up in a paper towel and throw that in the trash. Get my etching cream closed up. I'm pretty cautious. I'm probably overly cautious, but I am very cautious on working with this stuff as well as anything else that's potentially dangerous. If you could see my face, you'd see I actually have safety glasses on because I don't want it to accidentally pop up and go in my eye. If it can itch glass, think what it can do to your body or your eyeballs. So, just word of caution, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and that you take safety precautions. Okay, the etching cream's been on for a total of about 10 minutes. Now, with this etching cream, what some people will do, and what I have done also, is they'll take something, they'll scrape off the excess, and then they'll put it back into the jar because you can reuse it. But I've done several things with etching cream. I have at least half of this bottle left. I have another bottle I'm waiting to use and I can see that my etching cream is starting to get little, I guess, dried pieces of etching cream, kind of little crystal things in it. And so I'm not actually going to save this today, but I would recommend that if you have a newer bottle that you go ahead and scrape it off and put it in. If you do that, you have to be very careful. You don't accidentally scrape it past your protection or that you don't accidentally let some drop onto the glass where it's not protected. So for me, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take off the excess cream very carefully. And I think I touched it with my gloves, so now I don't want my fingers to touch my glass. Okay, so I have most of the excess off, so what I'm going to do is just take these gloves off and have everything wrapped inside them. Now at this point, I'm going, and I should have left them on until I took all that off, I'm going to go in the other room where I have an old sink and I'm going to, first what I'll do is I'll rinse all that off and then I'll come back and I'll remove the vinyl and then I'll probably give it one more rinsing and then I'll show you the final product. Okay, at this point I'm going to go ahead and remove the vinyl. You can see the water dripping. I went in, I rinsed it, I used after I rinsed it real well, I used some dish soap. And you may not be able to see the etching real well from the camera. It turned out really nicely.
Okay, I'll go give this one more good wash and I'll be back. So here's the final product. It turned out really nicely. Hopefully you can see that etching. That's the beauty of etching is it is subtle, it's pretty. It adds a nice subtle touch to personalize a gift for somebody that you care about. So if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. And if you'd like to see what I'll be doing in the future, hit the red subscribe button and then hit the bell if you want to receive notifications.